You are you are good to go. And how the recovery process is going well for you? I know you said you're getting ready to put the shirt on, but how how are you feeling? Well, so the shirt's not going to go on for a little while. I'll be okay. the first one to say that. And and uh, actually, you got some breaking news here, just just huh. for you. Some breaking oh, news. Nice. Uh, I went and saw my doc yesterday, and she gave me clearance to resume upper body. Okay, good for deal. me means a lot. I put good in a lot deal, of work yeah. over the last three and change weeks. Um, for us to be able to be confident for me to do that. Welcome to the Work Hard People's Podcast. Hope everybody out there is having a great day. We're back here with Matt Freakin' Deacons, power lifter extraordinaire. No, he loves it when I call him that. I'm James, the old guy. Uh, we are missing Emma again. You know what? I don't have to dock Emma's pay. So I pay Emma zero dollars. So now I'm going to have to pay her half of zero. Because, <laughs> ah, yes. Because she's been missing too. No, no. She actually, we had a, I was just telling you, we had a, she was up in, in this area. She was traveling again today. We had a little team meeting yesterday. Nice. Had some things to go over, and she had some uh, of her insurance business going on up in Huntsville. So, uh, and then I think also she has her year end, uh, uh, the year end uh, like barbecue with her her girls that she coaches for volleyball. So, oh, nice. Uh, so that'll be good. Um, we're gonna dive into some uh, fun stuff with Matt. He's got a lot going on. We're gonna uh, go over how he did in his powerlifting tournament and. Uh, uh, just a few things that went on there and some new ventures that he's getting into. But real quick, I know you know this guy too, and I want to give a shout out to uh um Zachary the Viking Keen. He did a he did his show this weekend. Yes. And uh he got a third and novice uh heavyweight and or uh fifth and novice is it fifth? Yeah, fifth and novice heavyweight and third in overall. Wow. Or the the um open heavyweight. So very nice. Congratulations to him. That is, that is a good, good achievement. Anybody that knows him, I mean, he's come from like 300 pounds to this is his second show. He's really working hard. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the opportunity to sponsor him partially. We, we paid for his room and uh, sent him some T-shirts up there to kind of, and he, he was great about, you know, pumping us. So we just wanted to give him a shout out. But with that, Absolutely. let's Let's get into let's get into what Matt's going got going on because he's got some fantastic stuff. So, the first, let's dive in power the the tournament. How'd it go, brother? Yeah, you're so looking for some state records, national records. How'd it go? Yeah, so let's talk about that. So it was April uh, April twenty second. So it was about, a, about almost exactly a month ago. Uh, it was a meet at Main Street, Main Street Barbell in Toledo, Ohio, where I've been training since about Christmas. Um, I started joining there. I think I, I hashed this last time we talked. I joined there uh, so that I could learn the gear that I was lifting in with people who have lifted in it for years, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so so went there. You know, I got there. I was super hyped. I, just for the record, uh, I weighed in at 216. I needed to weigh in less than 220. It's actually less than 100 kilos. Okay. Um, I weighed in at uh, 216.4, which is... Um, well, let's just say that in the last 31 days, I dropped 21 pounds to make Whoa. The weight. Yeah. So yeah. I, I cut hard. You were talking about how you were, you're cutting hard. I, yeah. I cut hard and I'll tell you something. I think I found my new success, right? When it comes to making weight, instead of just like saying, I'm going to do 12 weeks and lose a pound a week for 12 weeks. And then I'm going to make weight that works for some people. You know what? That doesn't work for me. I yeah. like to enjoy the food as long as I possibly can. And then when it's, you know, time when you go, when I, when I get about a month out, I go, okay, it's going to suck for the next month. And guess what? I dropped 21 pounds in 31 days and I was actually three and change pounds under. Um, I did get a good laugh because some of the guys I lived with that were there helping with check-ins, they're like, dude, what did you do to yourself? Because they were like, my face was sunken in. <laughs> they're yeah, the like, death face going oh, on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, I had I'd eaten 12 egg whites in you know, freaking 48 hours. Yeah. And I was water cutting. And it was it was weird. The last week, I went from drinking 10 liters of water a day to one on the day oh, before. Yeah. And then I, I think I had, I would say probably like, a, like a, you know, the, 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 the NyQuil cups, measuring yeah. cups. That's about how much water I had the morning before I weighed in. Just for a little context. Yeah. 
went in. I was I wasn't nervous because I stepped down when I woke up and it showed two seventeen eight or something. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay, cool. And then I weigh in on their official scale and it's two sixteen four. I'm like, holy crap! How the hell did I drop a pound and a yeah. half in the last freaking hour? But whatever. Yeah. yeah, I don't care. Anyway, so so I eat some food that next or that day that Friday. So I go in Saturday feeling really good. Squats come hips feeling a little tight. I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen. The hip and behind my left knee was feeling a little off. I get that from time to time. I'm just like, I'm pissed because it was like, I hadn't felt it the whole prep and it started to feel it that day. Naturally. Yeah. Right? So I go and I end up hitting a personal record. Uh, I think by seven pounds uh, on the squat, I had a uh, 275 kilo squat um, was really awesome. Um, it felt really good. So that was very encouraging. Some bench press comes. And uh, let's just say that uh, this was about the end of it for me. So uh, it, it, what I mean here, you know, first bench came, misgrooved it with the bench shirt. You know, it's like a big canvas. It's almost like yeah. it's a canvas shirt that you if you don't get it in the groove of the shirt, you're going to miss the rep every time. Right. Yeah. And so I misgrooved it. I'm like, OK, you know what? It was just a technique. I just missed it a little bit. Go back. And that's was the end of it. I literally put, brought the bar out, started to come down, and brrr, crashed right down on yeah. top of me. Um, dislocated my collarbone at the sternoclavicular joint. Um, oh. And uh, when I sat up off the bench, I rug, rolled forward and popped it back in. Uh, you think and, uh, could the could the cutting as hard as you did have something to do with that? Uh, I don't think so. I honestly you don't, don't think, think it so. was that because I had not had uh, I had been benching in my shirt every week, every okay. weekend before that. Was I doing super heavy maximal weights? No, I was going to boards. I was going to different heights. You know, I just know I know sometimes when you pull a lot of weight off, right, the joints and the the connective tissue doesn't have like the water and just the right. different the fat necessity and the the muscle tissue around it because you you've pulled a lot of weight and it can I know it can lead to some injuries. A lot of people ask, you know, like why do why are strong men, you know, like world strongest man, all that? Why are they so big? Well, they're so big because they use it as protection and force. They need it. it. You know, you just can't carry that kind of muscle and lift that kind of weight without it. Your organs will fall out. Right. Yeah. So no, I don't attribute it to that at all. Um, okay. The reason I reason on that is I was actually born with a broken right collarbone. Okay. So I've got, uh, let's say, history uh, is not on my side when it comes to right collarbone stuff. Hadn't felt it. I, I go to my doctor every month and we adjust it. We make sure it's working. She knows it's an issue. It's been a, a, a disposition of mine that yeah. has been since I've been seeing her for the last multiple years. And um, so we check it every time. And it, there were a couple of times in the prep where it was kind of funky and then we fixed it and. But let's just say, like, the last three weeks, I had not had an issue with it. Um, I gotcha. And I, actually, and I actually saw her the week before the meet. And it, even then, she was like, there's nothing <laughs> wrong here. Like, this is actually good. You're actually, like, the best I've seen you in a while. Um, so that was that was awesome. That's why I was, like, so confident going into it. Yeah. And then, uh, then this happens. So with me p sitting up and rolling it back in, and I basically didn't even start the rep. Like, I just lost stability holding the bar. Right away. It just, and, yeah. And it was probably 75% of the, of the max I, I had done in the gym. Okay. And so uh, I had, I called it after that because I wasn't going to be able to complete that same weight. If I couldn't even hold it, how the hell yeah. am I going to complete it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I called it and that was basically my withdraw from the meat, unfortunately. Yeah. Cause so, you have to do, you have to do all three, right? Well, you have to, to do, you have to complete one of each to get a total, which is, yeah. Um, which therefore qualifies you as getting finishing the meet. Yeah. So, uh, and what do you get? Three attempts? Yeah, you get three attempts of each. Three attempts. Okay. And so I learned a lot because there was a guy in the meet, and, and this is just me being now being more aware of my surroundings and aware of the gamesmanship that can go into this, right? Yeah. Is, is just because I want to hit a hypothetically a 600 pound squat, I could open at 135 if I want to. Yeah, just to get a number. To get a number. And that's yeah. what this one guy did. He squatted 928. <laughs> Heaviest squat in the meet, squatted 928. Yeah. They basically, his legs were so purple from how tight everything was. Oh. They basically carried him to the back. Bench round came up. His first attempt was 135. Okay. Yeah. Now that seems stupid, right? Yeah. But he wanted his 928 to matter in a total. Yeah. 
right? So hundred percent. If he cares about that number, he was protecting that. Yeah. Now we yeah. were all kind of like, okay, that seems like some some BS, but at the same time, it kind of makes sense. So, yeah. so for me, you know, I've already been turning of what I'm going to do from the next meet. Um, yeah, it's you know it makes sense I think on a couple things right because number one you can feel that groove right you can feel how you're feeling that day um, you know I do that so a lot of times when I'm programming workouts with um, especially like my uh, bodybuilding clients and stuff you know people that are really looking for hypertrophy um, a lot of the exercises I do four sets and I do four sets for a very specific reason um, the first set. And I tell them, even though the first couple are a little bit lighter, don't, I mean, don't do 30 reps. I don't want you fatiguing yourself. But the first set is designed to relearn the movement that day. How do I feel today? Because every day is different in the gym, right? So the, you do, you know, 8, 12 reps, just, okay, I feel I feel where I'm at. The second, the second set is designed to, how strong am I today? Yeah, we keep records and we have logs of what, okay, yeah, we'd like to be doing this for at least eight reps or 12 reps or whatever. But how how am I really feeling? You know, how how, how is the muscle feeling? And then those last two sets are all out to failure, right? Those are the ones where they're they're pushing. That's those are the two working sets. So People, some people look and they're like, man, that's a lot of sets. And I'm like, no, re really, the first one doesn't count at all. I mean, it's it's just, hey, this is my groove today. This is how I feel. Oh, my shoulder hurts a little bit. I better be careful. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but a lot of my programming goes goes that that way just for that reason to kind of prevent injury, get you set up, ready to go. So that kind of what he did correlates to me he did the 135 he gets the rep he knows how he's feeling uh granted if he's squatting as much as he was i think he probably could have started a little bit heavier but you know i get it it makes sense to me yeah and so and that's the interesting thing with with um you know me lifting in single ply in gear is that i can i could only i could do one or all of the lifts in gear and that would qualify as single ply Right. Yeah. So like I just because I didn't wear it for a bench now means I'm raw. No, that's very yeah. false, right. But I could also do any of the lifts in no gear. You know, as long as I do one lift in gear, that's the that's the category I fall in. Yeah. So I know for me going into next time, if I'm still chasing these national records, which, by the way, I am. You want to you have unfinished business. We'll, we'll I've unfinished business. At, I've yeah. unfinished business at, at 220. So so since I have that unfinished business, I'm I committed to do my next meet at 220 again yeah um, but i know for next time like if it's not for me it's not going to be a can i bench this it's here for me right now yeah and and in training like uh you know whenever i get in my shirt next like i know it's going to be the most baby stuff because it's all going to be here it's not can i actually do it it's, it's yeah can, it's I, can I do it here right 100 percent um so i already know that if i'm not feeling it then I won't put my shirt on and I'll just bench raw. Yeah. And I'll adjust you, my numbers to bench raw. Do you guys at all ever um in the in the powerlifting world, do they ever feed themselves into a show rather than cut into a show? Oh Maybe, yeah, yeah. Because like just just to give you an idea with uh with clients that are in somewhat decent shape that I can don't have to just kill them. Like I got the I got two guys that uh were doing a show in November. One of them, where he's going to suffer. If he wants to do this show, he's going to suffer. The other one, I plan, we're on point on, on the calendar. We're on schedule to have him where we need him to be two weeks out from the show. And th at that point, I can cruise him in, right? I don't have to make him suffer. Yeah, we'll cut some water last week. You know, we'll we'll do some manipulation and things like that, right? But but I can kind of let him eat so he can keep a little bit of that glycogen. And then that way, I learned that actually listening to a podcast that Hani Rambod did because he likes to try to get there because he was talking about when you are missing the mark and you have to go and suffer that last week, sometimes you don't know if you can get it back. You don't know if the glycogen will fill up fast enough when they're on stage to get that pop. 
Sure. And when he has his athletes that he doesn't have to tie them down super hard and he can kind of cruise them in and then carve them up for the show and just, and then just blow them out. So right. um, I was just wondering, do they, do, do people do that in the powerlifting world as well? Well, so, you know, in, in powerlifting, uh, you have weight classes, but at the end of the day, the, the, unless you're usually competing for some form of record, it doesn't really matter what weight class you're in. Yeah, because you're just right. lifting for you. You're lifting for you. For the yeah. general population power lifter, does it matter if, if – they always say if you're five pounds away, then you can probably do it. But what's the point in doing what I did where I dropped, you know, 21 pounds in 31 days for what? For just me to go and lift. Like then I would have just done the 242s if I wasn't yeah. actually chasing records, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Since you're chasing a record or actually have it in, in grasp – thanks, bud um, – if you have it in grasp, it's a different story. Then for me, it's uh, I want to do this because I want this record. Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. But overall, they say in general, unless you're going for a record or to win the you know World Powerlifting Organization big title <laughs> and it's money driven, yeah. then yeah. it's a different story. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, no. So what's I'm, next? I'm, what's the next tournament? So the next meet I'm going to do is at the same gym, September second. Okay, so already signed up. It's already paid for. It's happening. You are you are good to go. And how the recovery process is going well for you? I know you said you're getting ready to put the shirt on, but how how are you feeling? Well, so the shirt's not going to go on for a little while. I'll be okay. the first one to say that. And and uh, actually, got some breaking news here. Just just oh. for you, some breaking oh, news. Nice. Uh, I went and saw my doc yesterday, and she gave me clearance to resume upper body. Okay, good for deal. me means a lot. I put good in a lot deal, of work yeah. over the last three and change weeks um for us to be able to be confident for me to do that and yeah. not feel like I'm gonna screw anything up. Were you so, going to physical therapy or no so I my chiropractor um she doc, give her a shout out Dr. Sarah Rhymes at Cairo CLE in Northeast Ohio if you all right yeah, 100%. Northeast Ohio I drive two and a half hours. Oh hi Teague um I drive two and a half hours once a month to see her. Okay well, yeah in April April May it was three times in two months because of the injury. But yeah, we'll um, definitely throw a throw throw her info out there for sure. He just turned <laughs> eleven the other day. Yeah, I saw day. that actually. I saw that on your story there. Yeah. So um, but anyway, so so she gosh, he's hijacking the cam now. Come on, it's dude. all good. Um we like animals. Yeah. So she uh we we agreed that um you know overall the stability, the the amount of work that I've done with my PT work without going to PT. Um, you know, has has definitely helped and definitely gained strength back. Yeah, uh, I actually took a barbell to the doctor yesterday so that we could image imitate the bench press to see how it feels, how it looks, what's firing, what's not firing, etc. So yeah. good. Um, but the I didn't go to a PT or a physical therapist. I went. I took her advice and we agreed on exercises, and I literally did them two to three times a day for three weeks every day. And first week I started, it was, uh, it was, uh, the very, the micro, micro mini band. Um, yeah. and it was, you know, rotator cuff to the side, up yeah. and down side raises and front raises. Then people, grab, go ahead. those things real quick while you're talking about that, people underestimate the importance of doing those things on a regular basis, especially like I see guys go in the gym, man. It's like, they just jump on a bench and yeah, they just grab the bar and throw some bench and then they start putting weight on there. But man, if you're, you're asking for trouble, everybody's like, yeah, I don't like benching because I tear my shoulders up. And I'm like, well, hey, do you warm your rotator cuffs up, your triceps up, your front delts up? Do you get yourself set up to start benching? <laughs> you know, right. I mean, and, <laughs> and most of them don't. And then they no. wonder why the hell everything hurts. Exactly. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, I did that on each side just for balance and for saying it just because you're doing it on one side doesn't mean you need don't need it on the other. Yeah. Uh, and just because you injured one side doesn't mean you still don't need it on the other. So I would do the band, the micro mini band. Week one was micro mini band, three pound weight. So I would do basically four sets of each rotating on and off. Okay. Week two came, still used the micro mini band, moved up to a five pound dumbbell. So did that two to three times a day, depending on the day. If I was like a day where I was annoyed at work and needed to let out some frustration, <laughs> I threw one of those in the middle of the day. There you uh, go. So it would be a third time a day. Um, and then last week was I brought, I got the red band, the mini band, 
and a seven and a half pound weight. And okay. did that two to three times a day. And just when we went, when we were there yesterday and she t- t- uh, tested my range of motion coming down this way, it was dead even with my left arm, Good. which right after the injury, it was here. Yeah. And I couldn't move it. So was uh, it locking in place or did it just hurt? I just couldn't move it. You, it moved, just, it, that was it. it was that was it. Yeah. Completely stuck. stuck. Yeah. Um, well, that's and, good. and I think you may have seen on my, on my, uh, social media a little bit, some of the cupping and, and needling pictures. hundred yeah, um, percent. Yep. So it, so it was about 30 minutes where she scraped right after that next Saturday, she scraped, cupped and dry needled and then put the stem on the dry needles, uh, yeah. in the infraspinatus and supraspinatus. Uh-huh. On the right side, and in 30 minutes, I had full range of motion. Oh, good. So, literally, good. since I was restored the range of motion, now I had to retrain it and rebuild up the strength. Yeah, because so, it's amazing how fast strength will leave you. Um, um, if if you're consistent in the gym for you know many years, you can. If you take time off, you can usually get it back fairly quickly. Um, but it, man, it goes fast. It's amazing. You you. You lay off for, you know, even sometimes just a week, and you can notice, like, okay, I'm not quite as strong. It, it starts happening quick, right? And so, uh, so yeah, she, we, we agreed. I won't say she cleared because it's not like I was seeking clearance. Yeah, we agreed. We agreed that we can move forward now because that was my biggest thing. Is I'm not seeking permission, but I also am not going to be an idiot, and I'd rather yeah. have us be on the same page. Then you on one page and me on another, and then when I come back that I hurt myself again, you say I told you so, right? Yeah, I, wasn't I, I mean, <laughs> you, if you're if you want to if you want to compete and you want to do the things that you want to do, you know, set those records and stuff. Uh, you don't want to be uh, just going in there like an idiot for sure. You know, you need to seek other people's advice uh, just to be successful. Exactly. So, um, so that's the the bit of breaking news is uh, this week I will be uh, back doing upper body. In less capacity, naturally. Bench press, she wants me to start benching again. Yeah, like, good. Like this week. Just yeah. get the motor patterns back. Get mm-hmm. Even if it's freaking 10 pounds on each side. Who cares? Set one, baby. Right. Set one. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something. And, and getting that feeling back and getting those muscles trained. Um, yeah. And then we also agreed on, on kind of a plan of action for, say, the next month until I see her again. So, good. for example, um, upper back, rear delts. Um, you know, those kind of exercise movements that target those are going to be the predominant of my upper body days. I'll yeah. do some bench. I'll do, um, you know, I'll do like, like I said, some bench, I'll probably do some barbell rowing ish, some form of row, uh, in, in that fashion. And then the rest of the accessories will literally be upper back or rear delt specific. That's uh, funny. I did, I did, uh, I did back today and, uh, I did, um, I, I was like, man, I need to find out how to, I can do rack pulls because, you know, my foot's jacked. I can't stand up and do it. So I'm like, I need to find. So I got in the Smith machine and I got a, a bench, flat bench, and I got it set at an angle where I could put my knee on it. Right. And then, you know, do some light, uh, do some light uh, um, rack deads. Right. So I can do I go down and I'm at a little angle and I go to go up super lightweight and I instantly felt it in my lower back. I was like, whoa, I better be careful with this angle or I'm going to get myself in trouble. But yeah. it, when I got the angle right, if man, it felt really good. I, I haven't been able to do a whole lot of lower back stuff uh, be, just because of the balance issues and being able to you know, have stability when I'm pulling something. So it was kind of nice, but my lower back, pumped up in two seconds i was burnt i was like whoa whoa i still am feeling it it's like it definitely is uh definitely knows it got work today (laughs) yeah so i'm I'm very excited for this week to get back to upper body training um it's been a mental struggle for me um i know you and i have talked a little bit on the phone about some other things but it's correlated to everything of course and it's it's been very hard i've done a very good job at restraining myself but, I say to, oh, but go ahead, it doesn't mean that there's not an urge and there's not it there's not the me taking every single step to not go there yeah and well, it's so hard they say you know compartmentalize it right mm-hmm. well 
still all in the same brain. It's going to pop up. I don't care what it is. I don't care what you're doing. Exactly. exactly. It's not as easy as people say, you know, you have, and, and when all that's on you and, you know, you, you may be feeling upset about one small issue that you're dealing with that's causing you some mental stress, but you take all your other stressors in your life that don't bother you. And now that you have that one, you know, issue with some mental stress that just adds on to it, which makes it go worse. And then your mind starts spinning and it's just a mess. The The mental game is, is so key to anything that you're doing. Yes. And that's something I've learned over the last month is, is how important to me. Some of these things are me not being able to train to my capacity has kind of kept stress on me. Instead mm-hmm. of me being able to release it, right? Yeah, and and that's one of my one of my things in the gym is is while yes, I'm working towards powerlifting goals, and yes, I'm working towards body building and strength training. It's yeah. also a stress relief, and yeah. not being able to kind of let that out in the full. It's like I it's like I feel like I'm only emptying emptying it three quarters because I'm only training three of the four days I had been. So. Yeah. And now, and now I'm three weeks in, so I'm still at full stress capacity, right? Because now I've missed one times three. It's compounding over time. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm like, <sighs> so you have all this extra time. What have you been doing with yourself? Just sitting on the couch? Oh, uh, well, not on the couch, but more like at the <laughs> desk. Oh, churning okay. ideas of, yeah. of ways of ways that I can I can try new things, right? You know, everyone, everyone has the way, has their things they do, but also a lot of people are very scared to jump in and do something different. Everybody's comfortable, wants to be comfortable, doesn't want to dare to do anything crazy. Right. And that's not me. So uh, that goes right to the old line, right? Uh, to to do anything really good. You you want to get very comfortable at being uncomfortable. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, I've, I've started a couple newsletters, uh, just things that are just things I want to talk about, ways I can try to make people better. Because at the end of the day, the one thing I've always said is, what Matt, what's your goal in life? My goal in life is to inspire the uninspired. Now, whether it's yeah. not they see me lifting 600 pounds or deadlifting whatever, or, you know, coming back from an injury, the comeback story, everybody's favorite, or, yeah. you know, they see one line of mine that says, hey, you know what could save you time? You know, cook your food in bulk, right? Yeah. Save you time. Sure, you're going to spend two hours now doing it, but guess what? You're saving four hours in, during the week of doing it. Right. Yeah, it's a it's a good newsletter. I mean, you you've put out a few issues now, and um, I read it. I mean, I like it. One of the things I love about it is it's it's to the point. It they're they're good ideas that you're talking about. I love the name. Keep it simple, stupid. I mean, that is uh, uh, or is it keep it stupid simple? Which one is it? Keep it keep it stupid simple. Keep it stupid simple. Yes. And I I love it because it you're it is that it just you know it's to the point. It, this is this is a, a small little idea that I can help you with right here. Boom, and it's good information. So you know, hey everybody, remember that. Keep yeah. it stupid simple. Keep it stupid simple. And the funny thing is, is you can say that you can apply that to almost every facet, right? Yeah. I when I do my training, going back to fitness here for a second, the training I do isn't simple, right? There's a method to the madness, but it compounds over time, and mm-hmm. it's based on waves of this and waves of that mixed with waves of this, and doing that and make sure you do that, and what about that, and you know, don't forget that, right? It's so complex that you're sitting here saying like, why is this so hard? It's not. It shouldn't. Yeah. Be, right. And so, um, you know, you could take it to there, but then you could also go in, in your life. You're going grocery shopping, right? How can you optimize your grocery shopping? There's two two modes to this. For me, for me, I'm a repeat eater, right? I mentioned yeah. it in one of my newsletters. I buy two proteins. I cook two proteins. I mix it with one carb source because it's one I digest best, and I add a vegetable. That's pretty yeah. simple, right? I'm about the same. <laughs> Right. Yeah. However, my wife, who her and I are on very different nutrition plans because she is uh, vegetarian, I'll call it. Yeah. She's vegan when she cooks and vegetarian when we go out. Yeah. But um, so she doesn't eat any meats. So we try to find something that works, but she can't eat the same meal more than twice in a week. And yeah. So that gets a little more complex. Right. But for, for most people, you know, you can pair a lot of the same combinations together Throwing one little thing difference here, one difference there. You could eat chicken every day of the week, but if you put three different seasonings on it, guess what? You have three different flavor profiles. Yeah, hundred percent. And so, and so, you can still cook it all in bulk. <laughs> you can yeah. still do the things to save you time over the week by just keeping it simple. 
Keeping it yeah. stupid simple. You know, I have, I actually have some clients that, that they overcomplicate every, everything. Like, yes. it, it, and I keep telling them, listen, quit overcomplicating. Quit. You're overthinking every step. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Just, you just got to do it. You can't, it's, it's like, what, uh, you know, paralysis by analysis. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure when you started, your powerlifting, you weren't breaking down all those things. You just went in and you lifted heavy stuff. And then you started learning how to train better and how to train better and dialing things in and getting better. You, you weren't trying to reinvent the wheel. And I think sometimes, you know, I mean, he'll, it, 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 my one guy, dude, he'll call me. I'll be like, Hey, but uh, you know, I, I ate this and it, it's, it's I'm like, bro, you, you've gone way too far. Right. <laughs> you're already point, too far. You're right. already too far. Just stop there. <laughs> Let's let's dial it back, you know, just just keep it stupid simple. I love that. Yes. I love that line. Yes. And you know, when I'm at work, you know, the just to, to tie this up with work, you know, I go I go in the office every day and I've got a to do list that, you know, is completely out of control right now. And so I've gone and, and actually studied the Eisenhower matrix. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Basically no. it's it's a matrix, four boxes. Important, not important, urgent, not urgent. Okay. It's important and urgent. It's on the top of your list. If, yeah. it's, if it's urgent, not important, eh, okay. Is it important, not urgent? Uh, okay, you can kind of mix those how you need to. Uh, yeah. And if it's not important and not urgent, then get it the hell off your list. And yeah, I've more. never heard it termed as the Eisenhower method, but I, I always heard it as the ABC, right? Yeah, the yeah, ABC that's... of getting things done. You have A, these are the things that must get done right now. B, these are the next step. C is the next step. Yeah, so so um, and, since uh, I started doing that, like I've been able to get much more meaningful things accomplished with yeah. the time I have, and it's turned me into less stressed about work because it's I don't have a fifty item to do list anymore. Yeah, because I have ta I take the time every Monday and say these are the ten things that need to happen this week, and they need to happen kind of in this order ish, pending yeah. what comes up, and that's where things get added during the week. But it's never overwhelming because if something comes up that I know somebody else can use their time to do that's a hell of a lot less valuable than mine, I can pass it off and say, you know what, can you take care of this for me? Right. Yeah, and a, a lot of times, not in every instance, but a, a lot of times we have more time than we think we do if we would just plan better, right? If we would organize and structure our day. Um, I'm like, the, I'm hyper vigilant about stuff like that. I think everything goes in my calendar, right? Like my workouts are in there. I'm going to be there from this time. I got this at this time. Everything is is scheduled out because it's the only way that I can make sure that I have enough time to accomplish everything that I want to accomplish in a day. If I don't, yeah. something's going to get left out. Right. And so and so I've even taken that with my personal time. Not that I have a to-do list that I put in some fancy-ass matrix every week. But yeah. at the same time, I sit here and say, okay, on these days I'm lifting – these days, Beth is working late. Okay, I could take care of this and this while she's busy working. And I can take care of dogs and do what I got to do, which is how some of these newsletters came about. Because I can yeah. do writing. I can do bulk writing when I have Stroke of Genius on nights where she's working. Like, I can come home and you know what? I want to think about things that aren't work-related, that's not gym-related. And guess what? I can channel it into something different now. That's usually how I write. Like there'll be a spark of inspiration and I'll get down and just blast out two or three things. And then, and it gives me something to, to work off later. Yeah. And so that kind of sparked, uh, that was the first newsletter. That's how that one sparked. Um, but also here's something to think about. You know, I, I have wanted to go down entrepreneurial ventures for some time. And I actually looked yeah. on my Facebook and I have a um, entrepreneur Facebook profile of myself that I started years ago. Yeah. That, I, that I don't want to say I deactivated, but I, I kind of deactivated because I'm like, well, let's be honest. I'm nowhere near as that. I'm still a young professional trying to find my way in some guided light that's somewhere around the universe. <laughs> that I'm still trying to find my way on, right? Yeah. So I deactivated it almost out of embarrassment. But at the same time, like, it's not for me right now. Well, yeah. now I'm there. So I went and I reactivated it. But at the same time, I've been doing a lot of listening um, to people who have done similar things, who have worked in jobs. They hate working for others. I don't hate working for others, but I also sit here and say, you know what? I'm getting so exhausted of eating other people's shit sandwiches, for lack of better words, <laughs> right? That Let I me go eat my own. I would rather eat my own yeah, and wake absolutely. up and know that I can go to bed or not go to bed at night because of something I created. A problem yeah. that it's my responsibility to take care of. No, it makes perfect sense, man. I'm kind of the same way. I, I don't mind 
working for others, but uh, I do like doing things for myself. I, I really do enjoy it. It's nice to have something form in your mind, bring it onto paper, and then go forward and make it happen. You know, it's it's a it's a good feeling. It's good. Yeah. So you, so every morning when I get up, and part of my morning ritual is to walk forty five minutes. Um, I actually drive to our YMCA that's ten minutes down the road, and I get on a treadmill. Even though I prefer to walk outside, which is weird. Why do I go yeah. to the Y and walk? Um, because it forces me to keep a pace. Yeah. Instead of me being off in La La Land, I can La La Land on my phone while I'm walking at yeah. a good pace, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So while I do that, I've been listening to a couple people. For example, um, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk is a very popular name. A, a, more, a less popular name, Cody Sanchez. She owns twenty six businesses. Hmm. Now, how the hell does she, how the hell does she have time for twenty six businesses? She right? has people she's to got, work for. She's her. got people, right? <laughs> but she is smart enough to know how to get into what to get into. So this kind of sparks my ideas yeah. in my mind. Um, and the first thing she brought up, which is the actions, first actions I'm taking, is doing a newsletter. Why? Because you yeah. can gain an audience. And that's the biggest yeah. thing. Things, something to think about. When you're on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and Twitter and all these other things, those are the platforms that provide you the audience. You don't yeah. own that. They own no. the audience. Yeah. Right? So so the part of the reason for doing some of these newsletters is one, it's they're, they're topics I want to talk about and I want you to understand and be better at. Um, and also another, the other topic, which I'll get into in a minute, it's just fun for me. It's, it's, I can cut loose and, you know, as, as they say in what was in one movie, cut loose and shake my rump, but <laughs> I can cut loose and have some fun with a little bit, but at the end of the day, I'm gaining audience that I can actually retain, right? Yeah. It's not, it's, pr- it's, it's, it's going to be my audience, not Instagram, not Facebook, not Snapchat, not all those audience. Um, no, I get it, dude. And that's why we started the podcast, man. Was it, it wasn't like, hey, let's do this to get paid. I could care less. I like talking to people and learning from others. And I just couldn't think of a better way to do it than this. Uh, because I just enjoy doing it. And the reason we decided to do it on uh, you know, in podcast format and and put it out is so that maybe one or two others can learn from it as well, right? Absolutely. So, you know, I've I've started these couple newsletters. In the very inception, but at the end of the day, you know what? I'm What's having the a second of- one. So the Again. second one I just started this week. It's called the Freakin' Deacons Food Reviews. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm a fat kid at heart, and yes, I will always too. be a fat kid. And I just posted a thing on Instagram of where it started and where it is, where it's currently. Yeah. And you know what? I was 155 pounds on stage in 2014, and I'm yeah, a healthy. I saw that right actually. Now. Saw it. Yeah. yeah, I'm a healthy 230 now. But you know what? Um, I'm, 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 you can't take the fat kid out of the fat kid. No. And, and even if you're 155 pounds and you still love sugar and sweets and, and sweet yeah. treats and all the above, you know? So yeah. I'm, I'm also the guy at work currently who will find anything that says limited edition and buy it. And then I'll bring it into the office for everyone else to try. So if they like it, they can go buy it, but they didn't have to spend the $7 to, to see if yeah. they like it or not. Right. Cause there are some people I work with where, you know, I don't necessarily think they should be spending their money on stuff like that. Yeah. Um, not that I'm going to tell them how to spend their money, but you get what I'm saying. Oh, hundred percent. So 100%. And, there's, and there's the mere curiosity point. So for me, you know what? I'm the guy who does that anyways. And if you go back on my YouTube channel, at Matt freaking Deacons on YouTube, go back to my very first videos. What were they? They were snack reviews. Yeah. They were uh, snacks on snacks on snacks. The yeah. treat of tasty treats. Right. So, you know what? I've, 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 I love reviewing food. I actually just was out last night with my parents out in, in Northeast Ohio at uh, my dad's retirement dinner. He just retired okay, after nice. uh, 45 years at the same company in the same machine shop. Nice. Just retired and we had a retirement dinner and it was at a place I'd never been to. And I saw something on the menu and I said, why in the hell should that work? So I got it and I took pictures of it and it was freaking delicious. And oh, so I'm yeah. like, there's no way that should work. And it so does. It's weird. That, but anyway, yes, you, you'll catch that this week. Yeah. Yesterday, yesterday where we, we ate it, uh, it's called Kona Grill. I had never, I had never been. They do like sushi and, uh, you know, all these different things and a um, lot of fresh fish. Uh, nice place. We we went in there and, uh, you know, I'm being, uh, you know, I like I said, I, I'm, I, I'm doing everything I can. I'm going to get as close to 
stepping on stage as I can possibly get without actually stepping on stage, right? Yeah. With these guys. So I am uh I, I'm I'm working hard and my body has been just like I'm one to three pounds a week. I'm dropping steady. I mean everything's looking good. And uh so we go, I'm good. I get this uh chicken, uh grilled chicken salad with a little dressing on the side. So you know I'm I'm being all good. And then I got freaking Emma, this girl gets this big old plate of like chicken pad thai and all this sushi and she's like you gotta try this i'm like no i'm good and then finally i'm breaking down give me that roll let me try that <laughs> i'm like if i'm happier tomorrow it's on you girl <laughs> that's hilarious because i obviously have no discipline no i i mean it's really i've been very disciplined uh just really hitting it hard and uh the results are starting to come in man like that's it great. is it is i'm feeling feeling good i'm not even hurting yet just some yeah. days some days i'm hurting but feeling good so awesome but yeah so it was just uh just completely out of random i was a fat kid and i said you know what if i'm gonna keep trying these and keep bringing these into work why don't i just write a small <laughs> blurb about it and here's yeah. the thing here's the thing about both that applies to both of these newsletters i'm doing both of them you can attest to are very quick reads yeah and there's and yeah. there's a reason for that I, in my entrepreneurial learnings and ventures and readings of people's signing up for newsletters myself so I can learn more, all of them are like 10 to 15 minute reads. And quite frankly, like if I'm going to sit down and have time to read this, it's okay. I guess I got to read this because now I finally have time to do so. Right? Yeah. I want you guys to get something quick because I'll yeah. be the first one to say I've got the attention span worse than a five year old. So if I have it worse, why would I expect yours to be better? Yeah, it, no, it's a great model, dude, the way you're doing it. Because it is. It's there in your email. You pop it up. It's like you read through it. You're like, oh, that's really good. I can use that. And you're on. Exactly. You're off to and the next thing. And with the snack one, here, oh, oh, you know what? I saw those. Those might, are those any yeah. good? Let me see what he has to say about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he really likes them? Great. Maybe I'll yeah. try them. And I throw yeah. a little humor in there. And, yeah, and of we course. Just, and, we have, and we have fun with it. So literally, yeah. that was the that's the inception behind those. Um, I also have something I didn't materials I didn't give you, but I, I can give you afterwards. Um, I actually just opened up an Etsy store this week as well. Okay, yeah, send, send me any, anything. All his stuff will be in the description, people. So uh, I really highly advise you to you know follow him on his Instagram and Facebook because he does put out good content. His YouTube channel uh, is what Matt Freakin Deacons. Yep, um, I tried and, to get as much yeah. as Matt Freakin Deacons as possible. That way it's pretty safe. cohesive. Yeah. And there's only a couple that are different. Twitter yeah, but, is one that's different because somebody decided to steal it at some point. Yeah. But his like his lifting videos are great to watch. They're inspiring, motivating. Uh, and you know, Matt's a great guy. So yeah, look look him up for sure. But yeah, so, so I just opened the Setsy store and uh on there there's some shirt designs, um, some different fun things. Um, I just uploaded a couple today. Um, you know, my wife, uh, we have the the soap Etsy store we talked about before. Um, you know, and and I had told her I had a couple of shirt ideas I wanted to do. So I'm doing a doing a couple of shirt things. And she's like, Well, let me see your design. She goes, Can we tweak this one and can we tweak that one? Because because women don't like that, but they like this. I'm, yeah. Sure. Sure. Right? Oh yeah. So I'm just I'm just having some fun with it. And and it's all honestly, it's all in um trial and error mode for me honestly. yeah like i'm, I'm no, trying to learn something that is that. where emma saves my bacon more than anything i'm telling you right now because i'll make something like i'll have an idea of something like i think we need to change this because you know i have a reason so uh one of the things was i noticed uh when we had uh destiny on the podcast the 911 dispatcher she did the thumbnail and she had some red writing and none of our thumbnails have red writing and I was scrolling through, and that red writing jumped in my face. Like, I instantly <laughs> saw that one. It's like, okay, we need to make some changes. So I did this one for the coach's corner, and Emma was stuck doing something. I can't remember. So I just ran with it. And I go, hey, what do you think about this? I, I like us maybe using the color red. Well, she looked at that thing. She goes, man, that thing is a total poor vibe. You cannot use that. I said, we right. So there. So. But, uh, but yeah, she says my, she is so good at just kind of setting it up, making it look good. So it's pleasing to the eye and, and still pops. I mean, it is a value. I am so lucky to have that girl, uh, working with me. So 
going to do something real quick with you present. Okay. Okay. Podcasting. Podcast fun on a Sunday. Posting <laughs> right oh, now. Look at that. There you go. You can get this out there right now, right now. Right now. That's good. Anyways, so yeah, I'm I'm enjoying myself doing these things with trial and error. And you know what? I'm I'm let's just say that I'm so interested in just being the best I can be and that there's something I can learn from it. And in the studies that I'll continue to have, if there's a you know a different thing that I find for me. And I'm not saying what I don't what I do now currently as my profession isn't for me. I've been doing it for 15 years. Yeah. Different kinds of supply chain management for 15 years. Yeah. Right? I wouldn't have done it for 15 years if I didn't like it, if I didn't enjoy it. And quite frankly, I'm at that point now that I'm I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, you know what? If I don't like it, why the hell am I doing it? No, yeah. And it's just it's good to get out there and do something for yourself. Uh it it teaches you a lot. Uh, it definitely teaches you uh, accountability when you start bringing other people into the into the pie. I mean, you can accountability to oneself is sometimes difficult. Sometimes people are it's very hard for them to be accountable to themselves. But when somebody else's livelihood or somebody else's future is in your hands, it helps you to be accountable to them and it teaches you a lot of things, teaches you discipline. Um, and it's just very fulfilling putting for me. It's the getting an idea in my head. Like I, I said this before, getting an idea in my head, putting it down on paper and making it happen. It's just a fulfilling task. Absolutely. hundred percent agree there. It is posted now, by the way. <laughs> oh, good. Um, anyways, uh, but yeah, no, it's, 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 I'm in, really enjoying it. Um, there is the, I know we had a phone call and I'll just be vulnerable and put it out there. We chatted uh, a couple weeks ago and it was the, the vulnerability of, um, that I was having in the moment of what happens if I'm not successful. Yeah. I'm ready personally in my eyes, how I'm putting, I'm giving myself the month of May. Well, not really the month of May, more like till the middle of June to try my strategy. I put my strategy down on paper and I said, I'm doing this for a solid month. Yeah. And we'll see what happens. Yeah. And you know what? If it's a freaking four finger stinker, then okay. <laughs> we we go back to the drawing board and try something different. If it works, what worked? Why did it work? What happened? I'll tell you something like my social media strategy. I don't know if you've noticed. I'm not going to go into exactly what I'm doing with it, but I've been posting a lot more over the last two. Oh years. yeah, your content, a hundred percent. YouTube, everything. You have definitely and, upped. Your... And guess what? The amount of engagement from random people, targeted people, everyone in general, the overall yeah. awareness. It's amazing what happens when you build some consistency. Yeah, you start building consistency, and all of a sudden it becomes noticed. Yeah. And there's been conversations I've had with random people that I didn't know I was about to have that conversation with today. Yeah, that's why and, we do this every week. I'm religious about trying to get at least one out every week just because it's consistent. It's here. It's like a TV program. It, it's coming at you. Exactly. And you know what? It's it's just amazing. And and I'm not sitting here seeing this as, oh, my numbers are increasing. No. I mean, at the end of the day, I care about how many people are seeing it. Yeah. It's where but, I'm at in my house. But, but uh, that's like I say, that's another person you can help, right? Right. And if it's if 5,000 people see it and one person is helped by it, you know what? I made an impact today. It's worth it. And it's worth and it, it. And it brings me joy to do it again. It's and you why know what? I coach, man. That is the reason I coach is to help people more than anything. And to me, the X amount of subscribers I have on the Keep It Stupid Simple newsletter, it might not be high and might not be many, but guess what? There's people there that have gone out of their way to subscribe that either I don't know or I do know that actually like it. So guess what? That's yeah. right there is reason enough for me to do the next episode. I was just telling my brother about it yesterday. Right. And you know what? So, yeah. And 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 as uh, somebody asked me, you know, someone came up to me at work the other day. And because we were talking about the, the snack we tried uh, yeah. last week. And then I sent them like, oh, you want to see what I actually wrote about it? And I forwarded him the link. So he comes over to me. He goes. 
so what what is this? What is this all about? And I'm like, you know what, dude? I go, you know what? I'm I'm putting my thoughts on paper. Um, I'm putting my reviews out there for the world to enjoy. And you know what? If anybody wants to see what this is all about and wants to see who cares about thoughts about specific products, sweet. Each new subscriber means I try a new snack yeah. or I try a new food or I go out of my way to try that because you know what? There's people that care because they hit that subscribe button. Yeah, no, it, it is, man. And like I said, you're, you're looking, you said you're going to do this. I, I like your plan. Um, you're going to do doing this. You've written it down. This is what you're doing for the next month. And that's how you want to do it. And it, that's important uh, to not because failure. I talked about this the other day. Uh, I did a, a little short about it. Failure is an option and it is, can be a good option because that's how we learn, right? That's Absolutely. how we grow. And so you take that and then you look at it in a month and you go, okay, this is what I accomplished. This is what was working. This wasn't working or none of it worked and you scrap it. But I'm telling you right now, people, if you don't ever try anything, you can never fail. And if you never fail, you're never going to get better, period. Exactly. And, and there's, you know what they always say, there's an old adage that the, um, the richest place on planet earth is the graveyard. Yeah. And I'm not the one, I'm not going to go to the graveyard thinking in 30 years ago or 50 years ago, if I would have tried this, no, yeah. I'm, I'm not about that. Will I make calculated risks? Yes. Will I say I'd really love to do that, but right now is might not be the right time. Yes. But at the end of the day, that doesn't ever mean I'm never going to go down that path. Yeah, no, I that's another I was talking about that too the other day. I, I think you you might have might have seen it, but I I've said this for a, a very long time and that is that everybody has the ability to be great. Being great is not the question. The question is are you willing to invest the time that it takes to be great? Cuz it doesn't matter what you're doing if you don't invest the time an effort into it, it's not going to happen. These things, these multi-million dollar companies, they didn't just appear. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into that. There's people that probably put themselves out on the very edge of absolute destitute, uh, you know, uh, bankruptcy to, to get some of this stuff off the ground and rolling. And they just stuck to the grindstone. And next thing you know, 10 years later, five years later, 20, whatever it is, they built something. But they had to work at it. It doesn't happen overnight. Absolutely not. And that's, you know, same way when it comes to lifting weights. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't rip out the 70s on dumbbell bench if you haven't done the 50s for years. Yeah. Right. No, dude, you're setting me up. You keep setting me up because the other thing I say all the time is that fitness is not a game that is measured in days or weeks, but months and years. Absolutely. Right? It is. 100%. It takes time to build that stuff, right? Right. And that's and that's why I highlighted the the reel I did the other day where it was I started in 2010 that I was 280 pounds of the 44-inch waist. Yeah. It, that was a great little reel, by the in, way. In 20, I, I really in enjoyed 2014, it. 2014. So that was January. It was like, I think that was January. No, I don't think. I know it was January 10th, 2010, when I looked at myself in the mirror and said, you're a freaking pig. Yeah. And then I whittled down, whittled down, stepped on stage. It was September 26th of 2014. And uh, I was 155 pounds. Yeah. So from 280 to 155. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, I had to take it all out. I had to get rid of all the fluff before I could, uh, you know, really rebuild into the machine I am today. And that was, like I said, that's 2014. That's 10 years ago next year. That's nine years ago now. So I've yeah. been lifting consistently since 2010. So I've been lifting consistently for 13 years. You know, I didn't start, start by squatting 600 and now I'm always still at 607. No, no right. No, it's amazing. Even my, when I look at like myself, just even over the last three years, the the change in my body because I was, like I said, I was always in great shape all the way up. I was, I was playing tackle football in a dole league at times in pads, full pads, full on tackle football games at forty one years old, and uh, I I had gotten a couple injuries, not football related, surprisingly, but 
uh, got I had gotten a few injuries, and I, I just I let myself just kind of fade away. And I was just in my mind, I was just like, you know, I'm getting older. I don't, you know, I don't need this anymore, you know, whatever. And then, uh, like three and a half years ago, I looked at a freaking picture. I was like, holy crap, I need to fix this, man. Mm -hmm. I have done messed up. And, and then I just started working, you know, I just put in the work and it, it's taken time. But where, uh, where I'm at now, the way I feel now, the way my body is changing, and it will continue to change too, right? So even, like I lost the weight and I was looking a certain way. And then I really had put on some muscle and I started looking a little different. And now that muscle shape is changing the volume, the volumization and the actual just overall 3d shape of my muscles are starting to change. Right. right. So I keep seeing these changes and improvements and it kind of keeps me driven. Right. It keeps me wanting to do, Oh yeah. Okay. I got that. Let's do this. Oh, that line show. Oh, bicep veins coming out, baby. That's what I'm talking about yeah and i was actually just talking to someone about this the other day like they were like dude you used to do that i can't believe you did bodybuilding he goes, i know you did crossfit at one time then we were talking about why i quit crossfit and and you know i it made me think like you know after what's next after i power lift or because i enjoy lifting picking yeah. stuff up and putting it down so if i decide not to do powerlifting competitions anymore what's next and yeah i think i might do eventually do an uh, olympic lifting competition because i love the yeah. olympic lifts i just that CrossFit was the forum in which I learned those. So yeah, uh, being able to pick up heavy shit feels pretty good, people. I'm just saying. I can't do it anymore, but when I could deadlift and do some stuff, even though it wasn't super heavy compared to like stuff that you're doing, but <laughs> it's heavy to me. Yeah. Right? It was heavy to me. And and doing that was like, yeah, I love it. You know, so, yeah, there I was good. I was just going to say, my favorite thing to do was to put, like, four wheels aside, four or five wheels aside on a hack squat and do reps with it. And the whole gym, dude, will turn. Yep. You, well, that's it, what's beautiful about yeah. the, gym, the environment I train in right now. You know, if you see the videos, you'll see all the people around. They're all supporting you. They all want you to win that yeah. lift. They all want to make sure that you do that lift. Oh, and by the way, that you can still walk out of the gym. Yeah, they take care of you, and that's the one thing I love most about my gym is just is just the fact that they uh, the amount of care and consideration they all they're all willing to help in any aspect. They might give you plenty yeah. of shit, but at the end of the day, they're gonna they're yeah. gonna be there and be your biggest cheerleaders and also take care of you at the same time. Yeah, I live I lived in a really small gym. I live in a small town, and uh, I lived in a, a really small gym. The owner, the guy who owns it. Um, uh, it's called T Fit. He's a he's a young kid. He's he's built this, got this gym. He's got decent equipment in there, everything that you need. And I'm in there. The times that I usually am in the gym, there's a lot of high school kids in there. And I, you know, I I get I have the opportunity to work with them and kind of coach them and spot with them and you know help them out. It's a great environment, and I love seeing these kids go in there. I've watched some of them just transform themselves you know, over the months and stuff. And it's great to, it's great to see. I love that, that gym environment. Most, a lot of people are intimidated when they go into the gym, uh, but because they just see people that are in shape. But I think most, most of us gym rats don't be intimidated. You have a question to ask, we'll help you out, man. Most of us will. There's going to be your, there's always idiots. Are you in my picture, dude? Or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yep. Most of us in the gym we're going to help you out. If you need some help, you need a spot, you have a question, ask. Right. And that's one thing I've learned is stepping into this new gym environment. Like to me, I'm stepping in with a bunch of sharks. And when I, when I stepped in there back in around Christmas time, like all these guys have been doing this for years and I'm the, I'm the freaking Nemo here. Right. Yeah. And, and it quickly, once they saw that, Oh, 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 this guy can squat 500 raw. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, oh, this guy okay. needs business. Yeah. Then it kind of it kind of flipped. Like, I'm not, I'm still not, like, the. I don't want to say the most trusted to do everything right the way they like it. Yeah. Probably not. But at the end of the day, they're like, okay, this guy's not in here to, to play tiddlywinks. No, he's right? in here to move some stuff. Yeah. So, so yeah. It's, it's, uh, but that's the thing. It's like, never be afraid to ask for help. Never be afraid no, to ask ever. a question. In anything, business, 
Absolutely. life, relationships, man. Um, uh, you know, I, I have, there are, there are people in my circle when, uh, if, if I am unsure about somebody and I know somebody that is in that field or doing something similar, I got no problem reaching out and saying, Hey bro, right. what's up? <laughs> how's this, how's this work? I'm, I'm looking into something. Uh, what do I need to look out for? How should I approach it? Um, when I see new lifts, I talk with other people. Like I may see something on YouTube and then I'm going to like, Oh, okay. I haven't seen that quite that variation before and then i start researching it and see who's doing it and who's really talking about it right okay right. what is it really doing yeah. right how's it how's it working on the muscle how's it you know and then once i've done that i'll go try it and see okay do i like the way that hits my muscles or not because you know that's another thing for you people to remember is you know and matt i know you could speak to this as well everybody's body structure yeah we're humans but our right. structure's different. Our muscle attachments are different. Some people need to stand, you know, feet wide to squat. Some people can stand with a narrower stance and oh, squat. Absolutely. It all depends on how the hips, you know, uh, uh, connect in there. So, you know, doing an exercise to experiment, just because somebody says, hey, this is the only way, man, to grow your triceps. This is the best move ever. Maybe for him or her. Right. It might not be for you. Try it. If you're not feeling it where you're supposed to be feeling it, you might need a different variation. So, you know, our bodies are a little bit of a experiment, right? To see what works best for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, and that's, you know, something you learn over time, right? Mm -hmm. But I also think that if people aren't willing to try new things, they don't know what their potential is, right? Correct. Yeah. And just because you know that you can, your hips tell you, you have to squat 31.6 inches wide. Try try going sumo. Go sumo and squat. Guess what? You're gonna feel something totally different. Yeah, oh, yeah. You're not gonna be able to do the same weight in your most than your most optimal position. But guess what? Your body's gonna develop in a different way. It's gonna help. Your muscles are gonna work differently. They're gonna grow differently. Uh, yeah. And, and just because you're also afraid that you're not gonna be able to sit on the toilet for a few days, or you're gonna do the free fall, <laughs> for example. Um, yeah. You know what? Guess what? That that. I don't, that's not a bad thing to me. I wear that no. as a badge of honor. If I have, if I get to that point that I push myself that hard, that that is where I'm at. You know what? That's a badge of honor. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I was watching a thing uh, the other day and they were, they were, ta uh, I know, uh, uh, Honey Rambot's talked about this a lot. Even, uh, Nick Tregilia on, uh, Tregilia on his channel, when he had mm -hmm. bodybuilding BS, he was talking about it. And, um, I've even heard Nick Walker talking about it. A lot of times people are afraid to put their muscle in a disadvantaged position yeah. when in real out reality, when you are, uh, you know, if you put your arm to your side and you do dumbbell curls, you can curl a lot more weight than if you get your arm out in front of you and do dumbbell curls. Cause now your bicep is in a disadvantaged position. So you have to use lighter weight. You're contracting into the muscle more. Right? So, um, if you can find angles that put your body, your muscle group that you're training in a disadvantaged position, you'll get better stimulus out of it. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people won't do that because then they can't do as much weight. Now their ego's involved. You got to go back lighter and start over, right? Yep. But you'll get a lot of growth out of doing those things, even though you're not using as much weight as you were before. Because of the disadvantaged position that the muscle's in, it's going to grow better or faster. It's going to, because it's like brand new stimulus. Well, and that's kind of another reason why I'm kind of excited to start doing upper body again, right? Because I have yeah. to change right now for the, at least the next, I'm going to say the next three weeks. Because um, I do kind of things and weigh things in three week blocks. Yeah. So for at least the next three weeks, all my, my main upper body workouts are going to be. I don't want to say mind muscle connection slash hypertrophy slash feel basically starting fresh. Yeah. And so I'm very interested to see the growth that happens from there. Um, you know, for at least for the next three weeks, because I stepping in once again into an unknown coming off an injury. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what this I've never injured myself lifting. This is yeah. the first time that's ever happened to me. And in how many years had I say 13 years? Of yeah. At least of being consistent with lifting and thir 13 years consistently. I've never been injured once. This is a first. So this is 
uncharted waters and I'm I'm going back to basics. And, and I think the hardest part for you is going to be, like you said before, in your head, that mental part of getting back under some weight and moving it. Well, I'll be honest so. with you, though. The, the interesting thing was, like, I've taken hydraulic on some more of my leg days now because I'm like, uh-huh. you know what, I'm kind of chasing some pump a little bit more. You know, yeah. I'm kind of since I still can't, I, I was guarding this the side a little bit. I was. Yeah, I can't do all of the stuff that I want to do. So I'm like, well, let's just do some more, more pump focus. And so yeah. at the end of each workout, I what would I do? I'd grab the band. I'd do my PT work. Literally doing just those four sets, those four circuits, my upper body would be so pumped just oh, from yeah. doing that PT stuff. And I'm like, where the hell has this been? This feels so See, hard. and I chase the pump, brother. Right. Like, oh, I love – there's nothing better than getting, getting juicy. And – Losing that weight, man. I, I was with my son in the gym a couple weeks back, man, and I did a most muscular. And you know the chest line that goes from your front delt across when you start leaning out? Yeah. That line is – I dude, it looked like I had – like they were attached. I was like, oh, I'm juicy, baby. I'm juicy. I was loving it, dude. I was like, I'm yes. posting that one. That one's going out <laughs> to everybody. Yes. Bro, I, I love that, man. That pump, I chase it. Love it. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be weird weird waters here for a little bit for me. But you know what? I, this whole thing is weird for me. Yeah. First. Well, hey, it'll be great, man. And you know, obviously, uh, you know, we, we'll always keep you coming around to check in, see what you're up Absolutely. to, what you're doing. So, uh, I also my my wife's probably gonna uh, she's been blasting the, blasting me to death because she's she's like, hey, don't forget we got Sunday dinner tonight. So I'm like, yeah, no, hey, we're we're I was like, we're almost wrapping up here. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, so anything what you got uh anything right now near in the future other than the the articles and then September you got the um powerlifting meet. Anything else going on, Matt? Yeah, no, not a ton. Going on vacation here in a few weeks. I'm kind of excited Ooh. going out to Arizona for a week. Um I've been to Arizona in a minute. Yeah, so so we've got two vacations planned. Uh you know, coming up we got the one uh the week of the first week of or first week of uh June, excuse me. Yeah. And then the next one is Labor Day week. So literally I compete on the second. And then that night we're driving to Cleveland to my parents' house and we're flying out the third morning to go oh, to Arizona. Good deal. Good so deal. Where at in Arizona? Um, we stay in Scottsdale. Okay. Good deal. Um, so we have a, a timeshare out there with what used to be Diamond Resorts. Now okay. it's Hilton. I House. actually know where that is. Yeah. And Hilton, I know where Hilton that is. Yeah. Them. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so we're, we have two. Two places in Scottsdale. We usually be bought back and forth, and the, these two this year is the same one. Uh, fun, so fun. We like them both, and clearly we go back two to three times a year and half the last couple of years. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, Where else are you going? Uh, we're literally going to the same place. Oh, both in June times and the same place okay, in yeah, September. Yeah. The only good difference deal. is in September, it's my parents Better. are going with us. Oh yeah, and good. This good. time it's my wife okay. and I. So that'll be good. Well, that'll be fun, man. Well, hey, yeah. Matt. Thanks so much for coming on, dude, and yeah, supporting dude. us. Um, we are happy to support you. I love what you're doing. Uh, I told you this before when you were on before. I think you are a great dude. Um, uh, one of the things that drew me, I don't, like, I, I'll watch cool stuff on uh, social media and stuff that, that I think is cool. Uh-huh. But if the guy's a douchebag, I just, I don't care. It's not worth it to me. Right. It's a cool I, I like story, to, bro. Yeah. I like to see people doing cool shit, but also putting themselves out there to help others and being positive and uplifting. And you epitomize that. You you always have since I followed you. Yeah. And that's why I always am interested to see what you're into. And I, I truly appreciate you. So, uh, people, uh, Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, definitely check out, you know, Matt freaking Deacons, man. Check his stuff out. I know you guys will love him. Uh, he's a he's a fantastic dude. And uh, with that, uh, don't forget to work hard, peoples. And remember, don't forget to smile. Thanks so much for watching or listening. Remember, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find us on Facebook at Work Hard Peoples LLC. Or Instagram at Work Hard People's LLC. You can also find us on our website at WorkHardPeople's.com. Have a great day or night. Don't forget to smile. <laughs>